Centuries ago, there was a small island kingdom to the southwest of Japan. A secret style of martial art was born there. Instead of using weapons, they used their bare hands. Those esoteric teachings are now known around the world. Karate. Literally, it means empty hands. Okinawa is the birthplace of karate, a martial art practiced by tens of millions of people worldwide. William Reed is from the United States. He's lived in Japan over 40 years and is deeply versed in many martial art disciplines. On this edition of Journeys in Japan, William visits Okinawa. He meets with teachers, students, and local people to discover the essence of this ancient martial art. Naha is the largest city in Okinawa Prefecture. It lies over 1,500 kilometers southwest of Tokyo. This exotic subtropical city is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Japan. I'm William Reed. I'm here in Okinawa, and I've come to learn about the roots of karate. It'll be fun enjoying the unique culture of Okinawa, and I hope to learn some of the secrets of karate. William Reed has practiced Aikido for 42 years and has a deep knowledge of its techniques. Now he travels to many parts of the world to spread the word about it. Well, here's one, a karate dojo. In the city of Naha alone, there are more than a hundred karate dojos or training halls. In Okinawa as a whole, there are over 400. And practitioners from around the world make their way here to study. We, we came to Okinawa because it's the birthplace of karate and that people from all over the world come to Okinawa to have classes training with the ok Okinawaian masters. Until the late 19th century, Okinawa was an independent kingdom called Ryukyu. It was a small country with a population of only 170,000. But it flourished as a key hub on the ocean trading routes to and from the Asian mainland. Strongly influenced by Japan, China, and regions to the south, Ryukyu developed its own individual culture. This is the path to the palace. You see the characters on the gate, Shure no Kuni, which means the land of peace and respect, which is the philosophy of the people of Okinawa, who were able to maintain peace with their neighbors based on respect. The center of the Ryukyu kingdom was Shuri Castle. This is the northern part of the palace, where important visitors were welcomed from China and Southeast Asia, which you can see in the influence of the architecture. On the opposite side, you find the southern palace. This is where visitors were welcomed from Japan, and you see the influence of Japanese culture. This mixture of cultures makes Okinawa unique, and karate is a superb example. In ancient times, karate was simply called ti, the Okinawan word for hand. The teachings were kept secret, and for centuries only handed down among inner circles of the Ryukyu warrior class. At the end of the 19th century, the Ryukyu kingdom became part of Japan and changed its name to Okinawa. With the decline of the royal family, the secret art of ti, or hand, with a mixture of Chinese Kempo and Japanese Kenjutsu, 
became known as karate, the empty hand. And thanks to the efforts of many master teachers, karate spread first to the common people and then to the entire world. Greetings. Good evening. How are you doing? You must be Miguel Daluz. Yes, I am. Yes, nice meeting you. Very good to meet you, William Reed. Miguel Daluz first came to Japan to study karate 20 years ago. He now lives in Okinawa and helps coordinate karate students from around the world. So, Miguel, I understand you've been in Okinawa for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. What keeps you here? More than just the ocean, which is beautiful, and the nature and all the things, uh, the people. The people who practice karate, of course, but the people in life are charming and very easy to get in love with. That's pretty. Neat. Don't take this the wrong way, but I get the feeling when I see karate in movies and show karate and competition karate that perhaps it's lost something of the original martial arts spirit. What do you feel about that? Uh, karate is about uh, spirit uh, conditioning. It's not how to be strong in fight. It's to temper the spirit to become a good man. And that's what karate is all about, that's the origin. So that's why Okinawan people can practice karate alone. You don't need to be lined up like in regular dojos. It's a self-tempering, both here, both here, and both here. That's what karate is supposed to be originally. Oh, you can hear them practicing inside. One of the karate training halls that Miguel works with is called the Shubukan Dojo. The Shubukan Dojo teaches one style of Okinawa's traditional karate, a style called Uechi Liu. The head of the dojo is Haruyoshi Shimabukuro. He holds the rank of ninth dan. Sensei, what is the purpose of striking and kicking the student? We should know by more and more. Gaibu karo no sogi ki ni taire ru yona. Jensen hagake no hagane no yona karada o tsukuru no ga mokuteki desu. I must admit, it was a lot more aggressive than I expected. So, by training every part of your body to become strong in this way, from your fingertips to your toes, I understand that it makes you much stronger. But then, what does this lead to eventually in training? The next day, William makes a visit to another training hall, the Shirokan Dojo. Shh. 
失礼しますあ、先生、はい、よろしくお願いいたします、はい、どうぞ The head of this dojo, Morinobu Maishiro, holds the rank of ninth dan. The style taught here is called Shorin Ryu. It's the style that stays closest to the original form of karate, known as T. <laughs> One of the tenets of Shorin Ryu is that students do not do practice sparring bouts, known as Kumite. Sensei, I heard that in showing you, you don't practice kumite or sparring. But I wonder, how do you know if it works in a real fight? Can you try it on me? All right, I accept your request. If I hadn't let go of this hand, the back of your head would have been badly injured. Yeah, I, I went as fast as I could for Sensei's abdomen, but he wasn't there, and next thing I knew, I was on the ground. This is the real deal. Well, Sensei, I see now why you don't do sparring. It's too dangerous. But then, how do you actually practice? We practice kata. In karate, practicing kata is like our Bible, because it includes all the important movements. This is the fundamental basis of traditional Okinawan karate. Kata is the word used for the set of basic movements that karate students practice alone, as established by karate masters over the course of the centuries. By practicing and repeating the kata over and over, students learn and develop the fundamental techniques, postures, and physical movements of karate. Now, let's do Uchikomi. Uh, you're getting the idea. You're beginning to understand it. Ah, <laughs> uh, so the... The movements from the kata just come out naturally when in response, and yes, I think I'm starting to understand the basics of kata. Sensei, kore donata no haka desu ka? It belongs to Itosu Anko Sensei, one of the legendary teachers of karate. Karate no kensei desu ka? Hi. He taught that you never attack first in karate. This is the fundamental principle. All of the kata movements start from defense. You must never be the first to show you intend to attack. 
The aim of kumite sparring is to strike your opponent's vital parts to overcome him. That's why our dojo does not do kumite sparring. William's next stop is a dojo called the Shimbukan. The head of this dojo, Shinsuke Moromizato, holds the ninth Don rank. He performs a traditional court dance known as Meikata, which dates back to the days of the Ryukyu Kingdom. Within these slow movements, the most esoteric techniques of karate were concealed. This style is known as Motobu Udundi. I understand that the movements of karate are contained in the dance itself. And indeed, while watching your beautiful performance, rather than just a dance, it seemed to be a martial arts movement in slow motion. Meikata is a dance style of martial arts. It includes all the vigorous movements, but transformed into graceful dance movements. This is one of the hand movements I showed in the performance. With two hands, it goes like this. You hold the back of your opponent's hand and raise it up, push it up, push it up. Moromi Zato's style is considered the noblest form of karate. Known as Tudi, it was handed down among a very select number of warriors in the very highest echelons of the military hierarchy. Sensei, the image that many people have of karate around the world is that of a martial art with strikes and kicks. But in today's embu, uh, I didn't see you performing any strikes or kicks. The important thing is to overpower your opponent without causing any injury. You prevent him from fighting and force him into submission. And you leave a way open for him to get back on the right track. Uh, as if karate had a spirit of love and protection rather than uh, competition and injury. Arigato gozaimashita. Arigato gozaimashita. Once kept highly secret, 
Okinawa's traditional martial arts started to spread among ordinary people from the early 20th century. Karate is now taught as a practical subject at most schools in Okinawa. I'm honored that I'm able to learn karate because it's um, an Okinawan culture. Um, I actually um, participated in a speech contest and I got really nervous. So at the backstage, I actually did some karate moves to calm myself down. After you've practiced a couple of years and you get good at karate, have you ever been tempted to use it outside of the dojo aggressively? あの、自分が強くなっていくのも分かるので、その強さの攻撃を相手が受けたら相手が痛む、痛み、悲しんじゃうっていうのが分かるので、使わないけどちゃんと学ぶべきだなと思いました。攻めるじゃなくて守るための
When we've trained our body like this, it can become a dangerous weapon that can take a person's life. That's why anyone who practices karate must do their utmost to avoid fighting, never be the first to attack, live in harmony with your neighbors, do not make enemies. When you follow these teachings, you can live in peace. Karate has its roots in the ancient culture of Okinawa. Their first principle was to live with respect and never make the first attack. I think we can all learn a lesson from the masters of karate and the culture of Okinawa. If you attack no one and you're strong enough not to fight, then no one can attack you. There are lots of reasons to come to Okinawa, the beaches, the music, the food. But to me, the greatest takeaway is their sense of peace and respect. Come to Okinawa, have a great time, go in peace.